Motley was held in front of City Hall today in support of changes to the policy that limits shelter stays from migrants. Mayor Adams is toting that his 60-day shelter policy has worked for single adult migrants. Uh, have they shown that they are um, making a genuine efforts to try to move on. Well, now to the latest on the migrant crisis. Mayor Adams says the city is imposing a 60 day limit for adult migrants in shelter. Human crisis in the Middle East to a human crisis in New York City. About 40 families of asylum seekers tomorrow must leave their home. We are really, really struggling with families with children. That is a real struggle for this administration. Stricter limits on migrants. New York's long-standing legal obligation to provide shelter to homeless people will be scaled back significantly under an agreement announced on Friday amid the city's continuing struggle to house thousands of migrants. To ease the burden on the city's shelter system, adult migrants will be allowed to stay in shelters for only 30 days under the agreement, city officials said. Was held in front of City Hall today in support of changes to the policy that limits shelter stays from migrants. Migrants are rushing to reapply for their housing as the 60 day deadline set by Mayor, Mayor Eric Adams approaches. This new agreement acknowledges the realities of where we are today. A shelter system in New York City was created to stabilize people. Some would be allowed to stay longer if they met certain conditions, including having a medical disability or an extenuating circumstance, officials said. The changes to the so-called right to shelter requirement are a major shift in a policy that had set New York apart from all other big U.S. cities. In no other city must officials guarantee a bed to any homeless person who seeks one, something city officials have alternately taken pride in and fought against for decades. The agreement resolved months of negotiations in state court between city officials and the plaintiffs in the original consent decree that established the right to shelter requirement, who are being represented by the Legal Aid Society. The new rules, which will take effect immediately, are meant to apply temporarily during the migrant crisis, which has led more than 180,000 migrants to pass through the city's shelter system since the spring of 2022. Under the agreement, adult migrants aged 18 to 23 would have at least 60 days in the shelter system before having to move out, unless they meet the exceptions. Migrant families with children would not be affected. The settlement also does not apply to people who are not migrants and staying in city shelters. What do we do? Come up with some tangible ideas. Uh, criticism is not an idea. 200 migrants arrived in the city at the Port Authority bus terminal, and they had to tell them they had no space to house them. Human crisis in the Middle East to a human crisis in New York City. About 40 families of asylum seekers tomorrow must leave their home. Mayor Eric Adams, a Democrat who has spent almost a year trying to weaken the right to shelter requirement, hailed the settlement as a major victory. His administration has increased the number of shelters, converted hotels to shelters, and opened tent dormitories to house the 65,000 migrants still under the city's care, 22% of whom are single adults or adult families without children, according to city officials. The mayor has warned that the financial burden created by the migrants is straining the city's budget, will cost $10 billion over three years, and threatens to destroy the city. Mr. Adams has said he does not want to end the right to shelter permanently, but to modify it significantly to relieve the city of having to house so many migrants. His main argument is that the 1981 consent decree that established the requirement never anticipated an influx of migrants arriving with nowhere to live. On Friday, Justice Gerald Lebovitz, who is overseeing the case, echoed that argument in describing the five months of negotiations that led to the settlement. Over the last year or so, the humanitarian crisis stemming from large numbers of migrants arriving in New York City stretched to the breaking point the city's ability to comply with existing requirements of the consent decree, the judge said. Our goal has always been to find a way for all parties to win, to think creatively to find a resolution that would advance each party's interests. The legal wrangling over the requirement began in May, when the mayor sought legal permission to alter the consent decree's term so that homeless adults and adult families could be denied shelter if the city lacked sufficient resources and space to provide it. In October, as migrants continued to strain the shelter system, the administration went further, asking a judge to allow it to suspend the legal obligation to provide shelter to single adults.
Officials argued that the city should be able to temporarily lift the requirement during an emergency or when faced with an influx of people seeking shelter. We have been clear from day one that the right to shelter was never intended to apply to a population larger than most U.S. cities, descending on the five boroughs in less than two years, Mr. Adams said in a statement on Friday. Today's stipulation acknowledges that reality and grants us additional flexibility during times of crisis. Like the national humanitarian crisis we are currently experiencing, he added. Lawyers for the Legal Aid Society emphasized that the underlying consent decree guaranteeing shelter to homeless people remained intact. They also noted that the city would have to extend shelter stays for migrant adults beyond the 30 and 60 day limits on a case by case basis, if, for example, they showed they were trying diligently to find a place to stay outside the system. Mayor Adams is toting that his 60-day shelter policy has worked for single adult migrants. The city says that 183,000 migrants have arrived in the city over two years. Migrants are being told just to wait until space opens up. We asked, well, wait where? They said wherever they can. Uh, have they shown that they are um, making a genuine efforts to try to move on? The city will consider each of those requests individually based on the totality of that person's circumstances and make a determination of how much time they might need, Joshua Goldfein, a staff attorney at Legal Aid, said in court. The right to shelter requirement arose from a class action lawsuit filed in 1979 on behalf of men who were homeless in New York that argued the men had a constitutional right to shelter. The main plaintiff in the case, known as Callahan versus Carey, was Robert Callahan, who was living on the Manhattan streets. It was brought by Robert Hayes, a lawyer who was a founder of the Coalition for the Homeless, which was appointed as the monitor of shelters for homeless adults under the decree. To settle the case, the city entered into the consent decree, which obligated it to provide shelter and board to each homeless man. Over time, the decree has been the subject of competing interpretations and complex litigation. Protections to cover homeless women and families were also extended through subsequent court decisions. We are really, really struggling with families with children. That is a real struggle for this administration. Mayor Adams implemented that 60-day limit for migrants with children back in October. And 60 days for families with children. And that ain't right. That ain't right. Many migrants currently in those shelters will be given housing for 30 days, then they're on their own. In an effort to work around the consent decree, Mr. Adams had already adopted a series of rules to manage the strain that migrants have placed on the shelter system. Last May, he issued an executive order that lifted rules requiring families to be placed in private rooms with bathrooms and kitchens, rather than group settings. The city also suspended rules setting a nightly deadline for assigning newly arriving families to shelters. The city had also imposed limits on how long migrants could stay in many shelters, requiring them to reapply if they still wanted a bed. Families have 60 days before they have to leave shelters and can still reapply under the new rules. Single adults have been allowed 30 days. Under the agreement, they may be able to reapply if they have a medical disability, a court hearing scheduled within 30 days, or are moving into new housing soon, among other exceptions. Under the settlement, the city must provide the plaintiffs with weekly reports on the number of migrants who are seeking and receiving extensions. Many single adults who have been reapplied for beds have had to wait days to get one under the existing rules. Some have slept outside in the cold while waiting. Resheltering Rights New York City has reached a settlement with advocates for unhoused New Yorkers, allowing adult migrants to remain in shelters following an initial 30- or 60-day period only under extenuating circumstances. The settlement acknowledges the realities of where the city is today and will end when the current situation changes. Mayor Eric Adams has long argued that an influx of recently arrived immigrants since early 2022 has pushed New York City's shelter system beyond capacity. There are now over 120,000 people staying in city shelters, with about 64,000 of whom are asylum seekers, down from a recent peak of over 68,000 at the end of December.
New York City is evicting 3,500 migrant families from the shelters where they are currently housed. Well, now to the latest on the migrant crisis. Mayor Adams says the city is imposing a 60-day limit for adult migrants in shelter. The demonstration comes as city council meets to address that topic. The Adams administration has forced asylum seekers to leave their shelter placements after 30 days. The settlement also includes exceptions to shelter limits for people recovering from or preparing for medical procedures and gives the city discretion to keep sheltering people who have made significant efforts to resettle outside shelter, such as taking English classes, looking for a job, or trying to find an apartment. Migrants with disabilities can forego the assessment and the city is not obligated to offer an alternative placement if the first offer is declined, except to accommodate a disability or concern such as risk of domestic crime. Adults who return to the system because their housing falls through can be resheltered under certain circumstances. There are currently about 2,700 adults who have sought a new shelter bed and are awaiting placement, according to City Hall. Under Friday's settlement, one or more of these locations will remain open as drop-in centers for anyone who rejects a new placement, arrives during the middle of the night, or simply needs a place to be indoors. These will have showers and offer meals. Starting April 8th, waiting areas will no longer be allowed to function as such, and anyone qualifying for shelter must have a spot meeting minimum standards, including cot, toilet, and shower access. Murad Awode, president and CEO of the New York Immigration Coalition, offered a mixed review of the settlement. On one hand, he said that the settlement establishes temporary terms rather than a permanent modification to Callahan and preserves initial access to a shelter bed but it also singles out certain shelter seekers. Going forward, Coalition for the Homeless and Legal Aid will be monitoring the implementation of Friday's settlement and will receive weekly reports on the immigration shelter census from City Hall. If the organization has concerns about potential violations, they can return to court. That's all for this video, folks. We'll see you next time.